Apple's latest top tier flagship has seen some notable upgrades this year in terms of performance. So it should be pretty interesting to see how it stacks up against its predecessor in the speed test. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is rocking Apple's latest A16 Bionic chipset run on four nanometer process node technology, as opposed to the 13 Pro Max's A15 Bionic run on five nanometer tech. The new chipset bumps up its main core clock speeds from 3.23 to 3.46 GHz and its secondary cores from 1.82 to 2.02 GHz. Both devices have the same amount of RAM at 6 gigs, but the new iPhone 14 Pro Max is using faster LPDDR5 modules as opposed to last year's LPDDR4X RAM. They have both been updated to the latest iOS software, that being iOS 16.03. And they are both ready to battle it out in my newly reformatted speed test. This is Tech Nick and without further ado, let's go. We're going to be kickstarting round one off with a simple boot to see which one can power on faster than the other one and it is indeed the 14 Pro Max with 15,39 seconds as opposed to the 13 Pro Max with 18,33. Going into the device and showing the icons for the first time, the 14 Pro Max picks up its second point and now we're going to be testing out biometrics and thanks to these both being iPhones, we're going to be focusing on just 3D facial recognition. The iPhone 14 Pro Max gets the first and the second win over here and the 13 Pro Max unlocks it faster the third time, but since it's best out of three, the 14 Pro Max picks up its third and final points in round one. Just to let you guys know, I'm using a Lux Media so that we can get accurate battery drain readings at the end of the test. So don't worry too much about the battery percentage right now. We're gonna be comparing it at the end of the test to the start of the test to see which one got a better milliamp hour per minute drain. And in terms of temperature, we're testing out the temperature at the start and we'll compare it once again at the end using an infrared heat gun over here. Jumping into round two over here, which is all about speed, going into the first app, which is clock, all things were neck and neck there, no points allocated whatsoever starting the time over there. And going into the calculator app, the second system app over here, once again, opening it up way too close to call this time around, so no point was allocated. A point is only allocated when one is obviously opening up quicker than the other device, but I don't really give a point if it's like, a split of a split second, where a hair of a split second between them. And opening the camera app, the 13 Pro Max was quicker, flipping to the selfie was neck and neck, and the 13 Pro Max and 14 Pro Max took the snap at the same time, but the 13 Pro Max oddly saved it to gallery faster than the 14 Pro Max. So two points on the 13 Pro Max, now one point on the 14 Pro Max by opening up gallery quicker, and its second point by opening up the photo quicker. Going into our first non-system app, first third party app, that being Photoshop Express over here, the 14 Pro Max picks up its third point, and going into the actual photo, it's fourth point. Now we're gonna go ahead and export both of these using the NVMe storage that we have on board of both of these devices and it's saved, clearly it's saved quicker on the 14 Pro Max, picking up its fifth points as opposed to the two points that we have on the 13 Pro Max. Going into Adobe Premiere Rush, a video editing program for smartphone devices. Jumping into that, the 14 Pro Max was quicker and it was quicker once again going into the project. Now it has seven points as opposed to the two on the 13 Pro Max. Now we're gonna be exporting this 4K 25 frames per second clip, keeping it at the same resolution of 4K and the same FPS of 25. We're gonna hit export over here. I am gonna speed it up. If you guys haven't noticed, bottom left hand corner, I do have the current speed that these phones are running at obviously while I was editing and they both got the exact same 12.04 seconds because they're both using the exact same NVMe storage. Jumping into our next system app, that being Spotify, it was extremely, extremely close over there, but the 14 Pro Max did indeed snatch its eighth point and going into the actual song that we're busy playing, it was too close to call. Going into our next app, that being Google Chrome, opening that up, too many different variables over here, different things opening up at different times, but they got to the same end result, so no point allocated. But when searching for me, the 14 Pro Max searched a smidge quicker than the 13 Pro Max, getting it its ninth point as opposed to the two on the 13 Pro Max. Going into Facebook this time around, way too close to call, neck and neck over there, and heading over to my profile, which one is it gonna be? And it's oddly enough, the 13 Pro Max quicker that time around, picking up its third point in round two. Remember guys, round two is all about speed, round one was all about boots and biometrics, round three will be all about RAM, and going into Instagram over here, here. It was almost too close to go with the 13 Pro Max, finished loading it up quicker, picking up its fourth point, but then the 14 Pro Max got its 10th point over there, going to my profile quicker. Going into Twitter now, which one is it gonna be? The 14 Pro Max slightly quicker this time around with 11 points as opposed to four points on the 13 Pro Max. Heading over to my profile, the 14 Pro Max picks up its 12th point now, three times the score in terms of speed in round two, as opposed to its predecessor, the 13 Pro Max. Going into TikTok, a new app in my speed test run this time around. And going into my profile over here, the 13 
13 Pro Max picks up its fifth point. Going into our next video app here, that being YouTube, what you guys are watching this video on right now. Going into the actual app, is way too close to call, no point allocated that time around, and heading over to my channel, there's usually many differences when it comes to YouTube, but once again, neck and neck that time around. Very interesting to see the 13 Pro Max actually holding its own quite well when compared to its successor here. Going into Netflix, very similar situation over here, going into the profile page, very similar, and going into the profile itself, getting to all the content, once again, neck and neck. Going into our first benchmark app over here, that being one of two, and then after that, we'll head into some games. Going into Geekbench, the 13 Pro Max opened it up a lot quicker than the 14 Pro Max. I'm not quite sure the app is too well optimized in terms of opening up on the new 14 Pro Max, probably because of the dynamic island at the top, but it got its six points over there, but the 14 Pro Max picked up its 14th point after running through the test quicker with a minute and 43 seconds as opposed to a minute and 48 on the 13 Pro Max, not to mention it had a higher single and multi-core score as opposed to the 13 Pro Max. Going into 3D Mark Wildlife, our second benchmark over here, just testing out GPU performance this time around. They were neck and neck in terms of opening up the app, but the 14 Pro Max finished a smidge quicker with a minute and 5.33 seconds as opposed to a minute and 5.58 seconds on the 13 Pro Max. Once again, the 14 Pro Max had a higher score and higher average frames per second count. Going into our first game of four, we have changed games up quite a bit this time around in the speed test section. And we do have Subway Surface here getting allocated to the 13 Pro Max picking up its seventh point with 3.34 seconds as opposed to 3.54 seconds on the 14 Pro Max. It's gonna get pretty interesting right now since we've changed games up. We have Asphalt 9, then Call of Duty Mobile, and then Free Fire. So I'm really interested to see what happens here. And going into our first game, that being Asphalt, the 13 Pro Max opened it up quicker, just a hair of a second quicker that time around, picking up its eighth point. And going into the actual game, it's really hard to see, but I did go over and over and over this clip, and the 14 Pro Max did indeed pick up its 16th point. Now, double the points of the 13 Pro Max's eight points. Such a beautiful game that is, especially on these wonderful XDR OLED displays. Jumping into our next game, that being Call of Duty Mobile. Many of you guys have asked me to include this in my speed test, so I have done just that. And going into it, which one is going to be quicker? It is indeed the 14 Pro Max with 37.19 seconds as opposed to 37.37 seconds on the 13 Pro Max. And we're jumping into a practice range mode within Call of Duty Mobile. Which one is gonna be quicker? And once again, it is indeed the 14 Pro Max. As you can see, it is loading a hell of a lot quick over here, getting to the gun right now. There it is. You can see the 14 Pro Max snatches up its 18th point. Now 10 points ahead of its predecessor, the 13 Pro Max. It's doing pretty well. I mean, you would expect it to do well since it is an upgrade over its predecessor. It is the successor to it. Going into Free Fire over here, oddly enough, the 13 Pro Max was quite a bit quicker with 10.36 seconds as opposed to 12.5 seconds on the 14 Pro Max. But going into the home screen, the 14 Pro Max was quicker, picking up its 19th point. And now we're jumping into training. And this one was extremely hard to call. I did look at a whole bunch of different variables over here. And as you can see, after it shows the training info and then it shows target range, when that disappears, you can clearly see the 13 Pro Max was quicker picking up its 10th point, finally making it into double digits in round two. Moving on to round three, this is all about RAM management. Forget about speed. I'm not gonna be testing them in terms of speed. We just seen which ones are gonna stay open in the background. As of right now, they have kept all apps open in the background except for Asphalt. We are going in reverse order. So we went from top to bottom corner. Now we're going from bottom back to top corner since that seems to be the most accurate. They've kept most apps open except for Asphalt that we saw a little bit earlier, but the rest of the apps all seem to be opening up. No problem on these devices, probably because of their wonderful NVMe storage. And of course their RAM on these devices are both six gigs, though we do have the new LPDDR5 RAM modules, which are indeed fast on the 14 Pro Max, but the RAM management comes down to optimizations and both of them are very well optimized with the new iOS 16, 16.0.3 that is. So they're having no issues here whatsoever. So no points were allocated at all since they kept all apps open in the background, which is not uncommon for iPhones. It's good to see that they still stick into their roots of incredible RAM management and optimizations. Now we did record temperature at the start of the test and it's time to record the temperature at the end. The 14 Pro Max jumped up by 8.1 degrees in Celsius so the 13 Pro Max only added 6.8 so it was cooler at the end of the day. However in terms of battery life the 14 Pro Max only drained by 4% while the 13 Pro Max drained by 6%. So when it comes to temperatures it seems like the 13 Pro Max is staying cooler than the 14 Pro Max which is a little bit sus if you ask me but the 14 Pro Max has the better battery life which we would expect but not so much since it actually has 
as a slightly smaller battery as opposed to its predecessor, the 13 Pro Max. Now, when it comes to score, we got an overall score of 22 points on the 14 Pro Max as opposed to 10 points on the 13 Pro Max. And when we look into the score, into the subcategories. When it comes to boot and biometrics, the 14 Pro Max was the clear winner with three points, as opposed to the 13 Pro Max with just zero points since it didn't do anything in terms of round one. But when it comes to round two, focusing on speed, we got 19 points on the 14 Pro Max as opposed to 10 points on the 13 Pro Max. And RAM management is pretty much equal on both of these devices. At the end of the day, the 14 Pro Max is definitely better. Whether you will notice it in a daily situation if you decide to upgrade is up to you. I don't think that you will notice it at all, but it's still interesting to see how they stack up against each other. This is Tech Nick, and I'll catch you in the next one.